Hey there, this is Bridget Danner with Women's Wellness Collaborative, and I'm here today to talk about perimenopause. So sometimes I tell people I'm in perimenopause, and I am, I'm 41, and they're like, you're not in perimenopause, and, and I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about this. So people think of menopause as, oh, I, having hot flashes and night sweats and like you're almost 50 or something. Menopause is the cessation of your cycle. It's a year, once you've hit a year without a cycle, you're in menopause. So there's, it's a bit of a misnomer. Perimenopause is the period before menopause when your body is changing and moving towards menopause. And that can go on for 10 or 15 years. Uh, it starts at age 35. Uh, that's the kind of opinion that I agree with. Uh, some people say it starts 10 years before menopause is another opinion. So the changes that happen throughout that time are, are really more of like what we culturally think of as menopause. And it can happen, you know, really slowly and subtly for some people, uh, or it can come on, you know, really strong for other people. So just kind of want to give you some information about perimenopause, which I think is a more correct term today. So what's happening in perimenopause? Well, frankly, it's kind of like the opposite of what happens when you're a teenager. So when you're a teenager, your ovaries are waking up to play a part in the endocrine system and everything's turning on and there's all this communication going from your brain to your ovaries and everything's like going and you, you know, you, you have your skin's breaking out and you're emotional and you're horny and like lots of stuff is happening. So as we decline, as our ovaries play less of a role in perimenopause, right, the ovaries are kind of starting to shut down to the point when we're menopausal, they won't really play much of a role in our hormonal system anymore. Uh, there are also some of those wacky communications going on, like when we're a teenager. So as our ovarian function declines, the brain will start to stimulate the ovary to work harder. And sometimes that results in twins. Sometimes that stimulation works, um, and other times it doesn't work so well. Um, the estrogen, that's our dominant female hormone, that's a part of the first part of the cycle when we get ready to ovulate, that some months could be high, some months could be low, some months we end up not ovulating, and then the estrogen builds higher. So first part of the cycle, estrogen is dominant, and then, uh, then you should release a, a ripe uh, egg that's ready to go, and that goes out, and then from that little egg sac, more progesterone is made, and the progesterone balances the estrogen. However, you know, as we're getting into perimenopause, it might be not enough estrogen to ovulate, and so there's no progesterone to balance it out, and then you get an estrogen dominance. So that's a common pattern in perimenopause. So, sounds like really horrible news, and I'll tell you some of the symptoms that you may experience. Um, you know, vaginal dryness, decreased sex drive, headaches, brain fog, depression, um, mid middle weight gain, heavy cycles, uh, breast tenderness, uh, irregular cycles. So, lots of fun stuff in perimenopause, but there are some things you, you can do about it. Um, one of them is just to kind of think about almost like slowing the aging process. Like I think that we're experiencing more peri perimenopausal symptoms earlier because our overall health is declined. So if our adrenal glands that come into play as our, as our ovaries are weakening, if our adrenal glands started out tired and now they have to work harder because the ovaries aren't participating as much, we're really going to be at a deficit. Uh, another thing where, you know, we need to be more aware of as we age in this way is blood sugar. Those blood sugar roller coasters are going to throw off our hormones, really make us gain weight in the middle more. So we need to be more careful with blood sugar, avoiding things like alcohol, processed grains, sugars. It's really like now a time that you need to take that more seriously. We also need to think about detoxification. So as we make hormones and then expel, break down hormones, we need to be able to do that breakdown process. And that comes from the liver and from the gut primarily. So is your gut healthy or is it inflamed? Is your gut moving or are you constipated? Uh, making sure you're getting nice fermented foods and probiotic, uh, prebiotic rich foods. 
uh, is important. And then making sure you're getting lots of nutrition so the liver can work properly. Making sure you're not depleting yourself with, again, things like, you know, alcohol and sugars and junk food. And even considering medications that you're on, are they depleting you of nutrients that you need to move through this stage of life more smoothly? Um, So I think, you know, in my opinion, like moving into this age is about finding like the wisdom that comes with this part of our lives. You know, we can't be burning the candle at both ends uh, and that's okay. You know, there's a lot that life has to offer when you get to bed on time and you wake up and do yoga and you have a green smoothie instead of, you know, a muffin. So you can get a lot out of life and really get those symptoms under control by getting into the habits of moderation and, you know, taking better care of yourself, prioritizing self-care, prioritizing time to yourself, time with friends, uh, not overworking. So it's really, it really can be a time where we still feel pretty good even as maybe our hormone levels decline. Our hormone levels will decline and things will get a little wacky with our periods at the end. Um, but I think if, if we're really well nourished, the hormones that we continue to produce will be sort of like enough for us to, to feel good and have energy. So I hope that's helpful. Again, my name is Bridget Danner with Women's Wellness Collaborative, and I am here to answer your questions about women's health. Uh, Just hit me up. I'm happy to answer at BridgetDanner.com. We've got also a fun quiz over there for you to understand or get get a glimpse into what's the root of your hormonal symptoms. So you can pick that up there right at the main page. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.